I'm trying to read from the incredible thing I had for you, but I cannot get my phone working. So I was just going to say that um, I was reading uh, about your biography before, and uh, Hercules is a very important person, um, has done a lot of mentorship in his life, had incredible positions, was a CTO of a very large company that was sold for something like $90 million or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and um, it's a very interesting character that will certainly talk to us about what he does. But before we start, I'd like to go for where are you from, Hercules? Tell us about it. Um, it's a good question. Um, I'm from the future. Um, but really, uh, I used to be a very famous comedian a uh, long time ago. Uh, long, long time ago. So, you were a comedian a long time ago. Tell us about it. Comedian. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, um, it's been quite a while now, and, um, uh, but you know, it's, it's, it's been a while. It's a long time ago. Um, yeah. All right. So, um, how, what made you move to Dubai? How did you come here? Um, well, uh, I, I had a gallery in, um, in London uh, uh, during the lockdown uh, in COVID. Uh, we operated under the radar, doing things under the kind of like, you know, uh, e events and exhibitions that we were doing. Um, and then, uh, then we had to kind of close down because of the COVID. So uh, I've been working on other options and it was like to, to look at creating virtual galleries in metaverse. What was that the gallery in Covent Garden when you're referring to the one? Well, the, the, the gallery in Covent Garden, we also scanned it and have had it in a kind of traditional VR sense. Um, but then I worked on um, creating a, a kind of iteration of it with, uh, with some developers I'm working with uh, uh, to create the metaverse uh, the way we wanted it to be. Right, that, that was exactly actually my next point. So. You've been hearing uh, the whole day, actually, about the metaverse. This is why we're here. Yeah. So how do you see uh, this fantastic new culture of the metaverse going forward, particularly? What kind of impact do you see in our world? Well, I think met metaverse is, um, is an amazing opportunity. I've seen different waves of uh, technology uh, from like almost um, letterpress to light to offset to laser printing and and then internet and you know web and you know the, this new iteration of uh, web point two and then web point three uh, three oh uh, so i think these these um the the metaverse is a is an is a completely different game changer i used to in in those days like nearly 20 years ago i used to play second life um, and I've been doing a lot of other games in Unreal and stuff like that. But what's happening now with the um, combination of what uh, the cryptocurrency and NFTs and blockchains uh, within this space um, and the ability for people to, to have their own control over their own space. So no longer you're dictated by massive con conglomerates like Facebook, even though Facebook is trying to brand it as meta, but it's far from it. Right. The, the control is really not in the hand of uh, the big players. You can have your own space and have your own control within that metaverse, right. which now, is something that is a uh, game changer. Uh, absolutely. Now, just staying for a second on the NFTs, okay? Now, this is a little bit outside the metaverse specific speech, but how much do you think NFTs is a whole bunch of hype? Or how much do you think this is very real? Something is happening and the reasons for it? No, um, NFT, I, I worked for, for, um, for companies who, who wanted to create um, new iteration of um, certificate of authenticity, for example. And that's a problem that the artist, art world has had to, um, to verify that an artwork is, is authentic. And what, um, what is blockchain and NFT is offering 
is precisely that, that certi certificate of authenticity for each piece of work that you have. It's like a deed to a house. You gotta see it in that way. A house on its own is, you know, is worthless without the deed. So having, um, having that certificate in the blockchain as a unique ID makes it valuable that you can trade that. Yes, in digital world, the works can be um, copied in different sense, but you know, you can do that with technology now. With, uh, with what the screen, 8K screens we have is much better, better quality than any printing system that we have available. At right, the so, so you, you, you're basically saying that via NFTs we have a way of tra tracing the origin of a specific uh, art piece, is that correct? Well, uh, you know, and, and you can also follow the provenance of the art piece. You can see the history of its changing hand. Um, and so, so that, that, that's, that in itself is quite useful and important for the, you know, because quite often you see a piece of work that you might come across, but you don't know the history of it. You don't know whether it's been stolen, whether it's been, uh, you know, who was the last owner. But through, through that blockchain, you can actually trace back where, where it comes from. Now, um, staying on the NFT side, because I think it's important for you to know, um, one of the things that's happening right now is that some artists believe that if they put their art as an NFT into the market, and I'm talking purely financially here, the price of their art will be higher in the uh, sort of blockchain environment than if they go through a, a, a standard party like Sotheby's or Christie's. Do you think that that's the case? Well, it, 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 there are, you know, there, there's possibilities of that because the works of art that are turned from the original piece to NFT often have another dimension added to them. You, you, you know, uh, I'm actually having a piece um, in the art fair um, uh, next week, or th this week, later, uh, uh, Dubai Art Fair by Moro Collect Collective. Um, and they, they basically take your work and they uh, tailor it to, to become a kind of animated uh, NFT piece. Um, yes, I could do that myself or, or get somebody to do it, but you know, the, you know, by, by, the, by the interaction of their, their input, they've added another dimension to my work. Right. So you know, the, this, this kind of interaction is, um, so the NFT is not just the physical thing, but there are some added dimension to it. Yeah. What about the uh, market size? I mean, obviously, if, if you sell an NFT piece at Sotheby's or Christie's, you have a specific market that they have in terms of clients or client base. Do you think that doing this via an NFT offers the artist more of a global marketplace? Well, sure, but I, th I think it's, it's uh, the, um, the kind of the marketplace and the structure of it is very new. There are not many um, leading players as such, and the quality of the work is not uh, often that great. Uh, there is not much curatorial input in there as in traditional art exhibitions. I think that that, that element of it is very important and at our wonderful culture, because we've been involved in, you know, I've been a curator for most of my life. I've put on exhibitions of a different kind and having that ability to also curate the work in the metaverse in such a way that is, the work is of quality, not just um, you know, because uh, it has to have certain team or value to the to the exhibitions that you put on metaverse, like it is in the, in the real world. Um, that's what I think is lacking in a lot of the platforms yeah. out there. So Hercules, um, we don't have a lot more time, but I'd like to ask you a question, which uh, you can give the answer to the audience. Are there any very specific projects you you're working on? in the blockchain, metaverse, or NFT that you're working on right now that you would like to tell us about? Yeah, I, um, well, there's this number of things that I'm working on. One is that um, the, with the metaverse gallery, we created the first metaverse gallery for um, Firuz Farman Farmayan, which is one of our 
uh, artists I work with. Uh, and uh, Janet Rady, which is a friend of mine, she's also curating the show uh, of his at the Venice Biennale, which is the first time Gyrgyz Republic are uh, participating at the Venice Biennale. Venice Biennale is like one of the oldest, uh, most respected institution, uh, cultural institution in the world. It's been going on since uh, 18. 90s um, for more than 120 years and um, it, and it, it's not unlike a lot of other art fairs it's, it's not goes on to like two or three days it goes on for six six months yeah. uh, and each country has a pavilion dedicated to to them and so it's a very important and the piece that he's doing is also very important and we are also working with our metaverse developers to create a, a new experience with that in the metaverse as well as other other uh, events and exhibitions that would take place in our metaverse our metaverse is, is a place where you can um, interact uh, we can have events there you can meet people so there's a lot of opportunities uh, it's opening up to us to uh, for people to participate and um, and uh, we're really excited to, to have uh, Firuz coming over next week. Well, in fact, later on this week, uh, he's coming for the um, Dubai Art Fair. And he's followed by a French film crew uh, that have been serializing his journey throughout. He's coming from, um, you know, uh, from uh, Kyrgyzstan. Then he's been going to London uh, uh, and uh, Spain. And it's coming. So, so there's a, it's going to be quite an ex interesting documentary, I think. Perfect. And because he, the team that he's working on is about the folkloric and mythologies of the area, which is also encompasses the whole of Middle East almost. So Turan is a kind of a, uh, it's called Gate of Turan. And yeah. Gate of Turan is a um, kind of met mythological space, but it's also a real land as well. That's where the conflict's been going on for many centuries. And people have created a lot of the mythologies that we, you know, uh, Indo-European mythologies as we hear is from the stories that come from these conflicts that have been taken up in, in these lands. Perfect. Um, so that, that's, and he's working with the villages and nomads because yeah. he's himself from a very nomadic, uh, old, respected, nomadic uh, family. Perfect. Now, I'm sure, Hercules, many people in this audience will like to follow you and follow your products uh, and projects, sorry. Is there a specific website they can go to to follow your projects? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, uh, ourwonderfulculture.com is, is one. Uh, Herx.org is uh, another of my own website. I'm also, another thing I want to an announce is I'm working with a number of artists from London that and elsewhere who are very concerned about the situation uh, in, in Ukraine and the war that's taking place. And we're, we're, I'm, I'm helping to put together Metaverse for Peace. And I wanted to make an announcement about that. And we want to get people to come forward and participate. All the artists can give their work to, and this is uh, totally, I mean, our wonderful culture itself over the years, has been an artist-run organization. We've uh, and had been for not for profit, but now we are creating funds and we're creating um, ways that people can invest in good art as well as traditional art for ben benefit. Because the art, as a kind of like a uh, portfolio, performs better than any other stock or property. So Perfect. it is a very important thing. We're working with. Um, number of art funds globally to create a kind of a boutique art fund for that. Um, and it's good to kind of, at the same time, we work on these kind of projects where there's benefit and we're working. Uh, so Meta, Meta, Metaverse for Peace is already registered and I like to have uh, people to come forward. They can come and see me on, at the booth if you, and I've had amazing response so far. Uh, we got we're, we are being connected to universities, and a lot of the other companies have been here 
are very, uh, very supportive of it. So we want to get people to, to be able to mint these works um, for free and be able to give the, all the proceeds yeah. for the good causes, uh, for the benefit of people who are, who are suffering from the, the, these wars that are being created. Well, that, that is certainly a fantastic initiative. Uh, I would concur with you, Hercules. I do encourage you all to go and visit the booth. Where, where is it? In the back there? Yeah, Hercules, we're, we're right? just behind there. Right. Uh, you know, and, yeah. uh, you know, and also I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, well, I'm pretty, you know, if you Google, I'm quite Googleable. So <laughs> if you, uh, right. you'll see the, quite a bit so, of history. So, so like, Google Hercules Fisherman for all these initiatives. Go see him to the booth. And we'd like to thank him very much for his answers and his time. A big applause for him, please. Well, uh, thank you, Gusta, for uh, inviting me here, and it's it's very uh, it's great to be part of Meta Week. It's there are amazing stands here, and uh, and it's lovely to to meet you again. Uh, very welcome to do so. Thank you very much. Bye.